So also, we had the WWE earnings report. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. And here's just here's the general information, then I'll talk more about it. WWE released their 2020 quarter two numbers, which showed a year-over-year decrease, but a record year-to-date revenue record buoyed by their TV contracts and some big savings with not running live shows. So before I get into specifics here, this is the gist of it, everybody. COVID-19 hit, and WWE was forced to cancel WrestleMania, and they stopped running all of their house shows, which they'd already started to do, and they stopped running Raw and SmackDown Live. Now they run in the Performance Center, and they tape these shows, and off they go on the airwaves, okay? Now also, WWE furloughed, we don't even know the number, but it could have been as many as 100 people from all different divisions in WWE. They got rid of wrestlers. They got rid of agents. One of them to our benefit because Lance Storm returned. So when this happened, you know, we noted, and, and you know, there are people defending this. Oh, they're a publicly traded company. Oh, they've got a, 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 a. They were the only wrestling company to furlough, fire, cut anybody. Ring of Honor hasn't done a thing. They haven't gotten rid of anybody. Impact Wrestling hasn't gotten rid of anybody. AEW hasn't gotten rid of anybody. New Japan, I I can go on and on. All of these different wrestling promotions, they took care of all of their employees during the pandemic, or their independent contractors. WWE in the middle of this pandemic... Boom, they laid the axe down. Cut, 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 cut. We got one of them on the show today. Luke Gallows, cut. Carl Anderson, cut. Boom, cut, 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 cut. So they cut all of these people during the pandemic. But because there was a pandemic, because they were no longer renting out arenas, because they were no longer doing satellite uplinks, because they were no longer doing all of that, they ended up making $50 million as a result of all of these savings. The amount of money in, I think, like per quarter, every single person that they cut, they saved $4 million per quarter. So, and by the way, this didn't even count in this quarter. This will be in the next quarter. So, they axed $4 million in talent costs during a pandemic at a time that because of the pandemic, they ended up making an extra $50 million because of savings as a result of what happened with the pandemic. The actual numbers here. Operating income last year for the quarter. This is last year. Operating income was $17.1 million. This year, because of running shows at the Performance Center, the operating income increased to $55.7 million. Net income, revenues for quarter two decreased a little bit, but I mean, what really happened was they're making so much more money off these television deals And these television deals are going to continue to escalate. So it was their most profitable quarter of all time ever because they were no longer running shows live in different buildings all around the country. And I guess, you know, partially because they cut everybody. But that's that's actually that wasn't even because that's that's next quarter. Anyway, more on this after the break. Observer Live. Brian Elber is here. Wrestling Observer Live. A couple of other notes here. We'll talk about some of the good news for WWE, but I'm, I'm hung up on one thing here, and that is that... Think about this fact. Merely by not running live Raw and SmackDown shows and NXT, merely by not running them, by instead running the shows in the Performance Center and taping them, they, because of that change, the amount of money basically generated... 
meaning it wasn't paid out and so you know they got to display that money in 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 profits here they could have paid for every single person that they cut for four years one quarter this isn't even counting what they're going to make next quarter and the quarter after that and the quarter after that and the quarter after that this one quarter the money they saved by not going live and renting out buildings and everything like that, they could have paid for every single person that they cut for four years. And I don't want to downplay all of the wrestlers that got fired. Obviously, this affected everybody. But when you when you focus on the wrestlers that got cut and furloughed, or even the agents, you're ignoring all of the people that you never heard about that got furloughed that did little things here and there for all of the live events, who weren't making anything near what these wrestlers or these agents were making. They weren't, I don't want to say they were making nothing, but when you think about, you know, for example, how much Gallows and Anderson, they're, they're the new deals that they signed, when you think about what they were making, I mean, these people were making nothing. WWE fired and furloughed them and whatever in the middle of a pandemic at a time where they saved enough money in one quarter to pay all of them for four years. In one quarter. And we still have next quarter and the quarter after. And I mean, next year, those those television rights fees, they go up even higher. They're escalating deals. So anyway, good news for WWE. I mean, WWE is being buoyed by a couple of things. One of them, obviously, is the television deals. These television deals, I mean, they are rich at least through 2024. Now, the important year is going to be 2022 when they start negotiating new deals. Will they be able to get as good or better for the television deals in 2024? We don't know. Now, every single time there's a negotiation period, everybody expects that, ah, the decline is such in television ratings that for sure they're going to make the same or less. And they always make more, okay? Maybe that'll continue on forever. But, we do know one thing, and that is that their television deals in the UK, in fact, they lost several television deals. And at least one of those television deals ended up going to AEW because WWE wanted way more money than it was felt that they were worth. AEW was offering their product for a, a cheaper price, and they were taken up on the offer. So they have lost television deals in the UK because they weren't doing as well as whatever they were paid to do, okay? SmackDown 100,000% is not performing the way that Fox wanted it to perform. NXT, NXT, and everybody talks about, oh, Raw is doing so much better than the USA average, everything like that, which is true. But guess what? NXT is at the station average. So if they've got like a really old audience which they do, and the ad rates for that show are significantly less than the ad rate for another show that's doing the same number. I mean, NXT could, don't report this as a fact, but it could be on the chopping block. So I think Raw is definitely safe for 2024, but NXT is, is going to be roll the dice, I believe, and SmackDown probably as well. The good thing for SmackDown is you know, SmackDown is way below the Fox Friday night average when live shows are airing, when new new programming is airing. But during rerun season, it actually does better than the rerun shows were doing a year prior. So SmackDown, you at least get a consistent number over 52 weeks. So it is possible that they will be safe, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. So television deals are number one. Also, and I don't want to say I told you so, but you know what else did really well? The WWE Network. Now, there's a few reasons why the WWE Network was up, I believe, for the first time in a couple of years. And, you know, one of the reasons, obviously, is there's a pandemic. And if you were a person that used to go to your buddy's house to watch pay-per-views, and now your buddy wants to social distance, I mean, if your buddy used to have six people over, well, maybe not all six, but maybe one of those people, they just got the WWE Network on their own. So part of this was probably that. 
that the pandemic caused pay-per-view parties to die. And some of those people that would go over to someone else's house, well, they just bought the network on their own. But you know what change they made that ended up with the WWE Network doing the best it's done in years now? They got rid of the free month. I talked about this forever. Always offering that free month, the free trial. And like every single one of you listening to this knows what happened. Everybody signed up with a new email address. They got the new free month. They would offer three free months. You would get your three free months, and then you would cancel, and they would send you another link for three more free months or whatever. Or you got a new me email address. And you did the, yeah. I mean, there were people that were doing the free month gimmick forever. And we pointed this out over and over again how easy this was. And for years, they kept that free month gimmick. And finally, they got rid of it, axed it. There is no more free month. And lo and behold, some of those people paid. Now, it's not like the WWE Network numbers doubled. I mean, they, they didn't double. But, you know, this is a period where, dude, look at some of these pay-per-views. I mean, even the hardest of the hardcore WWE fans... I mean, are you going to sit here with a straight face and tell me that the pay-per-view offerings by WWE have been better since WrestleMania this year than they've ever been since the network launched in 2014? Of course not. But because there's a pandemic, because a lot of people aren't going to their friends' houses anymore, and because you can no longer get a free month at all, they have seen an increase in subscribers. So... We've basically got the the television rights fees. We have got the WWE Network being up. And another thing, they they basically doubled their merch numbers because they're selling a bunch of brand new championship belts. So that appears to be the, the big change in, in merchandise. Fans love their belts, and they've got all sorts of new belts out. They've got some signature series belts. Like, you can get, you know, the cheap versions for, like, anywhere from, I don't know, you know, $300, $400 if they're on sale to their signature version that have real leather and cubic zirconia, you know, diamonds or whatever for, like, $2,000. They're selling a lot of belts. Fans want to feel like champions during this pandemic.